Hey YouTube, this is Isaac coming back at you with the second video talking about uh, valved harmonicas, half valve diatonic harmonicas. If you want to know my method for making your own valves easily, cheaply, and effectively at home, that's the other video. Go check this out, that out. This video is about valved diatonic playing, that is techniques for doing techniques on a valved diatonic harmonica. So first off, let's talk about what the valve actually does. Uh, it lays down uh, on the back of the replate opposite uh, the reed that normally bends. So in the lower six holes of the harp, that is the draw reed that normally bends. So you bend while you're drawing. So the valves are on that plate. On the top four holes of a normal Richter harp, uh, it is the blow reeds that normally bend. So they are on the back of that plate. So you're already starting to think uh, maybe it does something to those notes. It actually doesn't do anything to those notes. Uh, that is, except uh, clamp down when you're playing the opposite direction. So that is when you blow on holes 1 through 6 or draw on holes 7 through 10, the valve clamps down, and instead of allowing some of the air that would normally go through the draw replate when you're blowing, uh, it directs all of that air to the blow reed plate. Now that does two things, okay? Number one, sending all that air through the blow uh, reed plate makes the sound more tight, focused, and louder. So I've got uh, the harmonica that we just finished putting the valves on, and I've got uh, an equivalent harmonica in the same key, not the same brand, but you'll get the same idea. So I'm going to do the two-hole blow on the normal harmonica and then on the valved harmonica and hopefully you'll hear the different in, difference in tone between the two. So this is the normal harmonica. This is the same two hole blow on the valved harmonica. So hopefully you can hear that this is way more breathy, uh, and this is way more tight and focused. You can really hear it on the chord, okay? So this is the blow chord on the unvalved harmonica, and this is the same blow chord on the valved harmonica. It's just a lot louder because all the air is going through the uh, blow reeds and none of it is allowing to be slipped through the draw reeds, the sort of gaps that are there. Okay, so that's effect number one. Effect number two, and probably the main reason why you'd want a valve on harmonica in the first place, is that you uh, now have new bends available to you. Okay, so that means that all the blow notes from holes one through six can be bent down a half step. And all the draw notes from holes 7 through 10 can also be bent down a half step. So this is actually easier uh, bending logic than any other type of bend, overblow, normal bend, or anything. Every bend is half a step. That's as far as it's going to go. Maybe you can take it a little bit further, but not very much. Uh, uh, and that's it. There's no multi-step bends available on any of the new valve bends that become available on the uh, half valve diatonic heart. So that's actually uh, slightly easier, I think, to understand, especially if you're trying to wrap your mind around overblows, which don't bend the note down, but bend it up, pop it up, and it actually pops up, uh, not a predictable half step or a full step. It goes like uh, a note and a half above or so. And then you can do other stuff with that, but we're not talking about overblows, we're talking about valve harmonicas, okay? So uh, in a normal bend, it is the interaction of the two reeds together uh, that create the change in pitch. The interaction of the two reeds is actually makes the bends very stable, okay? So you can really lean down, you can make a bend, and you can go as far as that bend wants to go, and you can lean on it, and you can just hold it there. You cannot approach valve bends that same way, because if you push them too hard, the note will stop. It will literally quit, and you'll get a rush of air sound, and there'll be no sound coming out of the harmonica, okay? So you have to be a good bender already. You, that means you have to be somebody who can control their three draw bends, get all the half steps, hit the half step bend exactly uh, on key when you want it. Uh, and actually, uh, doing valve bends will strengthen your draw bends too. 
So this is your first clue about actually how to approach doing the valve bend. In fact, you approach it the same way that you would play a half step draw bend, except you blow. Uh, and then higher up the harp the same way. The same way you'd approach a blow bend, half step, you do that, but you draw. Okay? So let me play uh, what that sounds like for you. So first of all, the two, I'm going to do the two draw uh, and a two draw half step bend. And then I'm going to transition to the two blow and the two blow valve bend half step. Okay? Normal draw bend, now the blow. So you can see they're uh, definitely a little bit more touchy. They have a tendency to uh, they feel a little sticky, I think, at first as you're, as you're trying to learn them. And also, like I said, if you push them too far, they'll die. So let me show you what that would sound like. So you see, basically, I tried to push the bend too far, leaning on it like I would a normal draw bend, and it just died on me. So that's something you have to watch out. You have to be able to take it right down to the proper pitch and no further because it will stop. So let me uh, show you from the side what my mouth looks like. Actually, maybe this side is better. Doing the same kind of stuff I did in my throat. Yeah, I pinched it out there, trying a little bit too hard to show you guys. But essentially, it's coming from the same part of my throat that I do a normal uh, draw bend. Okay, so I'm doing it exactly the same. There's nothing different inside my mouth except for the direction of my breath. Okay, now some tips. You need to be resonant. You need to open everything up because the valve bend actually uh, uh, it, it wants to already be there. So if you approach it with a tight embouchure uh, and you pinch down, you're actually going to hit the blow uh, note already bent a little bit, and then you'll have a tendency to pinch it out as you try to bend it even more. Okay, so so what I'm talking about is this effect. <laughs> I'm being really tight and I'm already hitting the no bend. So open everything up, get good tone like that. Don't pinch down. As you pinch down, you start to clamp and you lose the note like I did there, okay? So start with big tone and relax the back of the throat and let that bend come naturally down to the right pitch, okay? So those are tips for bending. Now there are some other things that I think you can do uh, really well on valved diatonic harmonicas um, that are harder to do on regular harmonicas. And the main one among these is actually um, vibrato on the blow notes, okay? So vibrato, most of us do it in our throat. Uh, some of us use our uh, tongue to do a series of small bends. Some of us use our chest. Uh, uh, I always had difficulty doing good, smooth blow vibrato with the throat or the mouth. I could do it with the chest, and that's actually how I first learned how to do vibrato. Um, but mainly, uh, I worked on my draw vibrato, and so I got something that sounds like this. All right, it's smooth. I think it sounds pretty decent, um, and I worked on that. But every time I would go to blow, so I'm using the unvalved harmonica here, it just sounds chunky, so listen to that again. Um, it, for some reason, the blow reads don't respond to the same vibrato technique that I use on my draw. Uh, and I think that has to do with the fact that you can't normally bend uh, very easily anyway uh, the blow reed on a normal unvalved harmonica. Well, when I started playing 
valve harp, one of the first things I noticed is that the blow vibrato started to sound really smooth and natural. So listen to the same basic passage on the valve harmonica. And I think what's happening is that I'm actually you know using the same technique um, that produces a little bit of uh, pitch variation of bending action on the draw vibrato is now able to do the same thing on the blow reeds because they are valved and they can actually bend okay so that's the third thing so first thing was you get a tighter focused tone uh, second thing was you can now bend them to get new notes third thing the vibrato fourth thing is the uh, uh, effect of that focused sound uh, in terms of how I approach playing on this harmonica. I play things that require single notes that are more melodic that need a focused tight sound. What I don't do is actually play much blues with my uh, half valve diatonic harps because I actually like the breathiness. If I'm especially if I'm doing a lot of vamping chording and that kind of stuff. I like the breathiness, the flow of an unvalved diatonic harmonica, Richter harmonica. So I have a whole set of unvalved harps. And I find actually that I prefer valved, uh, valving alternatively tuned harmonicas over Richter harps because I play alternatively tuned harmonicas mainly to do melodies. So here I have a uh, alternatively tuned harp. This is a tuning um, that I call modern pentatonic, uh, but essentially what it is is Patty Richter all the way up the harp, okay? Uh, and because I'm using the blow notes a lot to get melody notes, having the valve there lets me get nice passages and I can bend into the notes and bend out of the notes and I can flow through both blow and draw notes. So I can play something that sounds like this. <laughs> So you can see that I'm actually bending into some of those blow notes the same way I would bend in to some of my draw notes in a melody passage. So I think that's uh, the, the one of the other really nice things that you can do. And of course, because um, some of these alternate tunings are laid out in a way that makes melody playing more accessible than on a standard Richter harp, I think the valving of them really helps you get into playing melody on them in a smooth legato kind of way. So uh, that's basically all my comments uh, for the moment on valve diatonic playing. I just want to end with the caveat that I'm not a pro or anything like that. I'm an advanced intermediate kind of a hobbyist, been playing about five or six years now. Um, been playing valve seriously only for a few months, uh, but have dabbled in valve playing for a couple of years, two, three years anyway. Uh, but it wasn't until I figured out how to do this technique of valving them myself that I actually ended up uh, going further down the route of valve playing. So I hope these videos have helped you get further down your path too. You've got the technique now to do it easily, cheaply, and effectively at home. And hopefully you've got some ideas for how to approach playing valve harmonicas uh, and how to um, incorporate the advantages of the valves into your playing. So if you've got any questions, feel free to hit me up here on YouTube or over on modernbluesharmonica.com. Catch you on the flip side.